Hi everyone, my name is Nicole Marie Burton. I'm an illustrator and I specialize in working with scholars to help them disseminate their research as comics. I also work with activists and activist organizations and I like to share my work online. So feel free to check me out. Uh, my portfolio is here, Twitter, Instagram. I would love to talk with any of you at a later date. I founded Ad Astra Comics, which publicizes and retails and promotes uh, comics with social justice themes uh, and comics that can especially be used in types of political organizing, especially. The second book that we ever put out actually was Extraction, which is about Canadian mining companies. And I remember thinking at the time, you know, why isn't this a bigger, bigger issue in political organizing in Canada? Uh, you know, about 70% of the world's publicly traded mining companies are in Canada. It's an environmental issue. It's intimately linked with colonialism. Really seems like a political linchpin. And I was uh, just kind of surprised. It, it, this book stuck with me and uh, the political organizing that I learned about through it stuck with me as a really important area of, of activism and resisting uh, environmental racism. So this book did not actually sell very well, <laughs> uh, although we did sell uh, many, many copies to Amnesty International or Amnesty Canada who bought books for their youth groups, which was awesome. Um, but the project did connect us and me to Joan Kuyek, uh, who is one of the other speakers at the symposium and who is talking about her book, Unearthing Justice. Uh, when I moved to Ottawa um, in between a couple of road trips between Toronto and there, um, I linked up with Joan and she would commission drawings for this book. Uh, but just to back up on a bit of a tangent here, on one of those road trips in 2016 was when I first really heard the term environmental racism. We were driving through Houston, which ironically, uh, the gentleman who coined the term environmental racism uh, teaches in Houston at Rice. Uh, we were not totally sure where we were spending the night. <laughs> and just by chance, I connected with Brian Paras on Twitter. And Paras works with a group called Tejas, which is an environmental justice, uh, anti-environmental racism, grassroots organization. And we were really inspired by the work that they did. They gave us a toxic tour of Houston. Houston doesn't have any zoning laws or doesn't have any significant zoning laws. So you would see things like this uh, on the right hand side, driving around neighborhoods like Manchester, which was a predominantly or is a predominantly working class Latinx neighborhood with um, skyrocketing rates of asthma and cancers. Manchester is surrounded on all sides by an ammonia plant, a paint processing plant, and a refinery. Uh, this reminds me, we met a lot of political folks on that tour, but I remember that Houston was the only spot in the American South where people really knew the names of multiple indigenous nations in Canada, and it was because they were linked through the Keystone Pipeline struggle. So interesting thing to observe there about uh, networking and solidarity through struggle. But back to Joan, she had ideas for illustrations that we would uh, tackle in this book, some big topics. Uh, so I'm sharing those here today. We started off with simple figures like maps. This figure really impacted me. Mercury contamination in Northern Manitoba, Saskatchewan is alarming, especially when you see how complex and connected the water system is, which I spent a lot of time on for this map. Joan talks about how mining remains profitable by way of uh, these externalities. Uh, and so this illustration was meant to illustrate that. So externalities being consequences of the extraction process that companies don't pay for. This could be anything from pollution to ecosystems collapse, rising rates of cancer or asthma. Um, maybe a mining company is exempt from paying property taxes where they have their headquarters and that negatively impacts the neighborhoods that live in and around that headquarters. Um, right up to uh, truly evil institutions like death squads and military juntas installed to keep a foreign regime friendly to the interests of mining companies. This may feel very distant in Canada, but it is a reality in places like Guatemala and the Philippines, where Canadian companies are deeply invested and certainly implicated. Uh, the ring image here was meant to convey the enormous input and processing involved in producing sometimes products that are completely trifling, like a pair of gold wedding rings. 
We touch on a lot of meaningful topics in this book, like government business collusion and international solidarity. I really wanted to portray anti-mining activism in a way that I had not seen it portrayed, that is colorful and celebratory, uh, you know, envisioning the victories against these gigantic governments and corporations. Um, I also wanted to draw things in a way that made you consider the earth from a different dimension. Uh, I have a note here, uh, to consider the earth itself as a character in the story, hence clumps of earth in many of the panels. Fundamentally, I think Joan's book helps to illustrate some concepts that are really vital to understanding the mining industry and naturally, uh, by extension, how to resist it. Um, these are complicated ideas. They are physically and figuratively uh, large and engrossing and sometimes overwhelming. So uh, something as simple as how mining works has been really valuable for me and I've passed it on to others who have appreciated the clarity that it brings. Um, I don't have a ton of time left, so I will just briefly mention some work that I've done since the work with Joan in 2018. This last year, I partnered with my partner, who is a writer and researcher and a private concerned scientist to produce this graphic history about the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. It's geared towards uh, students and is perhaps not as political as I would like it to be, but um, you know, it is interwoven in the history and I'm glad that it mentions some important things like traditional ecological knowledge, which I will jump into more in a bit. Uh, imagining a Canadian Green New Deal based on the research of Kyla Tianhara, who teaches in the Environmental Studies program at Queen's University. Uh, this was a wonderful project to work on, and I've found myself increasingly working on projects that uh, go in this direction. Uh, last year as well, Amnesty International, or sorry, again, <laughs> Amnesty Canada commissioned a comic to go along with their Just Transition campaign, which is freshly launched. Uh, working to raise awareness about where the materials come from to build our electric batteries in our cars, in our phones, in our laptops, uh, bringing attention to the indigenous peoples who live and often work these areas and so should have a say in how things are done. Uh, Two-Eyed Seeing with Dr. Andrea Reed from the United uh, University of British Columbia uh, this graphic is about looking at different Indigenous traditions of synthesizing Western viewpoints and Indigenous viewpoints, uh, often uh, in realms of uh, conservation, but also governance and cooperation. Uh, so from top to bottom, left to right here, we have the two-road wampum. Uh, we have Ganma, which is from Australia. We have uh, the double boat, which comes from New Zealand, and uh, two-eyed seeing here at the very bottom, uh, which is a principle from coined, I believe, by Mi'kmaq elder Albert Marshall. Um, these graphics were uh, wonderfully uh, envisioned by Andrea Reed, and I'm very happy to be able to continue to share them with people who are looking for solutions to the question of environmental racism and colonialism and the climate crisis. Um, traditional ecological knowledge is rooted in this, so I'll talk more about that in just a second. Uh, these were, uh, this is just one of a series of pages that I was very pleased to work on. Uh, Jenny Pickerel's work on eco-villages and addressing racism and sexism within these spaces. Jenny toured eco-villages across the UK and Europe, and we produced a comic about this dynamic that they are currently fighting. Finally, more work with Dr. Andrea Reed. I believe this work is incredibly important in helping us envision a way out of environmental racism. Uh, this is a Niska fish wheel, a relatively passive form of fish capture working with the river's current. These fish tumble from the nets into the troughs. Um, <laughs> Andrea says relatively comfortably. Uh, structures like this fish wheel have been used by indigenous nations along the Pacific coast as far north as Alaska for tens of thousands of years and different peoples hone in on different designs. So this design is specific to the Niska people in northern British Columbia. 
Dr. Reed believes that the fish wheel is an example of how we can approach indigenous knowledge as a solution or a component solution to scientific problems like fisheries collapse or climate change. Um, and both of these things, as we know, are intimately linked with environmental racism. Initiatives like the Guardian Watch programs of various Central Coast uh, indigenous nations, um, these, these initiatives are really the load stars in our search out of extractive capitalism uh, and the climate catastrophe that it has become. Um, I'm going to leave it there for now, but I'm going to leave you with this beautiful illustration that Andrea and I worked on um, that I think uh, envisions this solution. Uh, I want to thank everyone again, uh, the organizers of the symposium for bringing us together and anybody who has taken the time to listen. I look forward to an opportunity to chat with any of you later. Thank you.